the basic idea of, of, of personhood in our society is that first we have natural persons like you and me, human beings who basically have the capacity to hold all rights and duties. And that's kind of the, the point of departure. These natural persons, they can also get together and form what we know as legal persons, companies. They get together, they conclude a contract, and through this contract, a company, a legal person comes into existence. We basically distinguish these two person, persons, personhood, natural persons, legal persons. Everything in between, if you like, is uh, tools, instruments, um, they don't enjoy personhood. The European Parliament some time ago now in the report proposed that we should consider to grant personhood to these kinds of autonomous systems and artificial intelligence. This should be a new person, a, an e-person, um, and it should be granted by law. There is this interesting American sc scholar, Sean Byron from Florida State University. He's a professor there. He made the proposal or he developed the idea that all of what the European Parliament wanted to do with this e-person was already possible under the law as it stands now. You only have to take US company law and find two persons who create an agreement, a contract, creating a company which ties the will of this company to what the artificial intelligence wants to do if you like. So you, have, you, have, you will end up with the basic situation where um, uh, an artificial intelligence is able to do something and by reason of the, of the agreement concluded, the contract concluded between two human beings, this, uh, this purpose of the artificial intelligence uh, becomes the purpose of the company. And through this contract you have uh, you end up with an artificial intelligence that has the capacity to have rights and duties based on the contract between the two human beings. My first instinct was that this might actually be immoral, unethical. So we wanted to, uh, to have a, uh, a philosopher, uh, an ethicist on the table as well. That's why we invite, invited Andrew Walton, who is at the Newcastle University and who is very well versed in these kinds of questions on a very broad, on a very broad level. Well, the important thing to recognize is that this is already here. Um, if, if what I say is right about American law, um, this is already possible and you need just one state to allow it in order to be able to do it. So what I propose is that you can set up a legal entity that has an operating agreement that gives effect to the state, to the observable state of any software system, like an artificial intelligence or autonomous system. And um, by doing that, the autonomous system gets a very close analog to legal personhood. If you ask 100 lawyers whether or not a robot can buy a house, they'd all say no. Um, but what I say is that it's actually possible to do that by means of the artificial structure of a legal corporate entity or LLC entity. That all the operating agreement has to do is give effect to these autonomous systems, and now the autonomous systems can buy property, can enter contracts, can be legal agents, can be legal principals, all of the basic incidents of legal personhood. One question that always arises is um, whether this is going to destroy the world. And my sense is, though there are always dangers, um, I don't think that this is what's going to do us in. Um, that this is what's going to be a, a significant problem. And the reason for that is that there isn't much of a difference between an entity with one person involved and an entity with zero persons involved. So we talk all the time in general terms about how robots might take over the world and enslave us and destroy us. And the point I keep making is if that's true, then one person already can take over the world and destroy us or enslave us by means of a robot. And it's not so much worse if that person isn't behind it. Um, and the same thing applies here in a much more mundane way. So engaging with Sean on this question, I come at this question not as a lawyer, but as a political philosopher. As a political philosopher, what I'm mostly interested in is not whether or not we can do this by current legal terms, I'm interested in whether it's a good idea, whether this is normatively or morally desirable. What I want to raise really is to say, I think there's some reasons, some moral reasons to be cautious about this. 
What Sean's proposal essentially entails, giving an autonomous entity legal personhood, what that means is an autonomous entity, an entity that has autonomy, it's independent from human control, and it's intelligent. It's able to learn and develop its own ideas of sorts or its own practicing patterns. We want to ask ourselves whether those kinds of entities should be given legal personhood. We want to ask ourselves what interests would people have in giving that kind of entity legal personhood? Why would it be interesting for someone to give uh, legal personhood to an autonomous entity? In raising some problems with that, I think, or some worries about that, I think it's important to identify three concerns or three gaps, you might call them, about the possibility of an autonomous entity having legal personhood. The first of those gaps is what we might call a morality gap. Humans often are sensitive to the rights or the moral concerns about how we treat other people in a way that artificial intelligence simply may not be. Artificial intelligence, um, if it can develop its own ideas, um, could easily stray into having a moral outlook that's not very palatable. For example, if it's given uh, the task simply of creating money, uh, pursuing wealth, it may find a situation in which the best way to pursue wealth is to violate some legal norms or some moral norms. It may harm people. Because it can learn to develop a system that fits its rationale, that's a serious possibility in a way that it's not a possibility or less of a possibility for humans. A second gap we may call the punishment gap. One thing about humans is we can be deterred from wrongdoing, from crime and so forth, because we have a system in place that, for example, puts people in prison when they break the law. But the kind of deterrent effect that prison has or that these kinds of punishments have on people are less likely to apply to an autonomous agent. Um, an autonomous, uh, intelligent uh, being simply won't have the same fears as a human. It won't fear its own death. It won't fear incarceration. And so it's harder to deter it from wrongdoing than, it's hard, than it is to deter people from wrongdoing. A third gap is what we'll call the accountability gap. That is to say um, that there is no person who is ultimately responsible for what this entity is doing. There is no person at the end of the chain, so to speak, who when this entity acts wrongly, we can hold culpable or liable for what has been done. So. When we ask ourselves if we want to extend legal personhood to an autonomous entity of this kind, I think it's important to ask ourselves which kinds of interests people would have in setting up these entities. What I've suggested is that with these three gaps, the interests people will have in setting up these entities are not altogether good. Um, for this reason, I think if nothing else, we need to be cautious about extending legal personhood to them at this point.